Hello and uh, welcome back guys on this beautiful, beautiful sunny day. Um, Lacey's just staring at me so I'm currently walking through the field as I normally do on a nice sunny day which makes it even better. Um, so I'm going to grab her in and then I'm going to ride her. I wanted to ride her so I've got a few days off work this week which is always fun. Um, so t yesterday I was going to ride her but I didn't because people that live in the UK will understand how hot it was yesterday. It was about 31 degrees and it was way too hot so I gave her a bath and Wally a bath instead. Um, and also, what did I do with Darcy? Oh, I've also put a saddle on Darcy, so a little update on Darcy. She's doing really well. Her feet pick up all four feet now, no problem at all. Uh, she's got a mm, little bit more manners we need to teach her, but 100% better. Uh, put a saddle on her, walked her around the sand school, put her next to mountain block, and she took it all in her stride, did not even bat an eyelid. So um, if you want to see those pictures, they are on my Instagram, uh, link in description below. Lacey's just making me walk up a hill. So we can go and get her in a minute, but let's get into this video. So excuse me if the camera starts wobbling, my arm will start aching. I did have my vaccination today. I'm in that category now, guys. I'm in the group of vaccinated people. So um, Lacey is getting her teeth done today. Hello, love. All right, I'm coming. Um, she's having a little call out to me. I don't know if you heard that. Um, so Lacey, I don't want to say it too loud. She's got to get her teeth done today. She doesn't mind it, but I thought, why not bring you guys along with? I've asked my dentist nicely and to see if she uh, will allow me to film Lacey getting her teeth done. And I've got a few questions as well I can ask her. Um, she's amazing, I've, my dentist, I've used her since Lacey's about three and Lacey's coming up to a 10 year old. So we have used her most of the time I've owned Lacey. Um, I don't think she's had, no, Lacey's never had anyone else other than this dentist that I use. So Wally's just having a little roll. Um, yeah, so, right, I'm gonna grab her up and then I'm gonna ride her. You're very talkative today, my darling. Um, so I'm gonna get her up, ride her, and then we're gonna wait for the dentist. She's coming about midday. But yeah, right, we will. Oh, do you want a treat? Um, we're going to get these little teethy pegs done today, Lace. See if she's got any problems. I'm going to see why we need to get, why it's so important to get your horse's teeth checked. Especially if they're in ridden work as well. I'll ask all these questions. So, yeah. Stay tuned and we'll see if uh, there's any questions that you guys wanted answering. Um, I did get a few questions um, privately messaged through to me. So I'll answer them or ask them, I should say, and hopefully she can answer them. Um... So you guys might be watching it and think, I've got a question, but I didn't have time to ask it. But someone else might have already asked it for you. So stay tuned and see if you guys have got your answers by the end of this video. Um, make sure you do the usual, subscribe, like, turn on the post notification. I post every Sunday at 6pm. And um, I'm going to get this little diva up, get her out the sun for a bit because it is a scorcher of a day. Um, and I'm going to have a little ride around the woods. So I might do a bit of footage of that. And then it will be, oh, Wally's come to say hi as well. And then it will be purely of her getting her teeth done. So, right, should we take you up, Lace? So I'm just gonna hack this absolute beast. Um, there's other words I wanna call her as well, because she's in a really spooky mood as usual. Um, I mean, she when she spooks, it's not like, sometimes she has an outburst and it's really, bloody bad but sometimes she just literally is stupid little things like you can sit to them famous last words you can sit to them most of the time um but it's more like you'll be walking like this and all of a sudden she'll shoot to the side um because there's a leaf or something but anyway um so yeah like that she's just had a look at something i don't know what it was but she didn't really do anything she just looks i've got probably about half an hour 45 minutes something like that to quickly whiz around the woods and then get her back in time for the dentist so yes i'll catch you guys in a bit and then we can ask the dentist all those lovely questions you guys asked me to ask her 
um and hopefully you guys enjoy this type of video um hey so we were just waiting aren't we nicely you're being very impatient as usual but um one down there is getting done first and then laces you ready lacy lou yes right had to get my cap on guys it's too hot i'm burning up absolutely burning up Kate is being miserable, <laughs> wanting the sign to go away. Too hot. I want the <laughs> so what do you look out for when you're doing the teeth? So we're looking out for sharp edges on the outside edge of their upper teeth and the inside edge of their lower teeth predominantly, although they do get rough rims on the inside for their upper palatial edge and on the outside the lower buckle edge of their teeth and those rims can block their lateral movement, so their side to side movement. Okay, well, when they graze and stuff? When they graze and when you're working as well, so as you're asking your horse to turn, that lateral movement is blocked and their lower jaw can't move freely. Right, okay. Then that's when you can have problems with steering or you can have different evasions from the horses and the same with the sharp edges as well. Okay. So the sharp edges will rub on their cheeks. And again, block their movement. We're also checking for something called ATR, which is accentuated transverse rigid. And that's when the biting surface of the teeth are a little bit like a, um, a washboard. Okay. Sweatiness. That's <laughs> fine. Um, so you have to put up with me normally. <laughs> <laughs> So when they get that ATR, so it's ridges really running which ways or down there, uh, down there, arcades. Yeah. So when you're asking them to come down and work in an outline, or when they're putting their head down to graze, which should happen, get a lot of people thinking their horse is a parrot mouth. Right. Because their upper jaws will Overshot. just sit very, and they should sit slightly further forward. So as they bring their head down to graze, their lower jaw should slide. Right. So at ground level, the teeth are completely flush. Yeah. So that ATR, what it does is it blocks that um, anterior posterior movement. So when you're asking how to come down and work round, the lower jaw can't slide forwards. So then you get a backward pressure on the jaw. Right, okay. So you can imagine if you hold your jaw tight all the time, it makes your jaw ache. So her TMJ, her jaw up here, they get a pain in here or they get an ache in here, give them a bit of a headache. And this can knock on and give them pain in their pole. Right. So you can imagine it has a knock on effect if the pole's hurting. It can affect most other things as well. It's just because they're really tight. Tense, right, okay. <coughs> so what we're looking to do is just to make sure nothing's running and make sure that lateral movement and that anterior posterior movement is all nice and free. You don't get any evasions and they're nice and comfortable. Right. And the evasions you get range anything from just opening their mouth anything in between and standing up and flipping over backwards and all sorts of things right, okay. when they're uncomfortable and, you've got and it could things. just and it could just be a minor thing from their mouth and it affects everything else yeah it really can have a knock-on effect so you know it's like they've got a bad back or they're slightly walking yeah that could be something that carries forward and works further forward into their body and their teeth right okay problems moving further back yeah from an eating perspective, which obviously is their main priority, <coughs> they won't process their food as well. Right. They okay. can't chew properly. Yeah. So if you've got a horse that's not a good doer and you're always trying to get weight on them, their teeth are so important. Because if they can't process their food, so they can't grind it properly, so their jaw, when they chew, you should drop down and out and round in an almost circular motion and they alternate on each side to make sure they wear evenly. Yeah. So if they can't process the food and get all the nutrients out of it, it pretty much goes in one end and comes out the other the same way it went in. Right, okay. So they don't take anything from it then? They'll take some. Some of them get to a point where they can't eat at all. Right. And some of them will get some of the nutrients out of it, but they say a lot of it goes in your wheelbarrow the next day. Yeah. So if they've got good dentition, then you'll find they're eating better and getting more out of it. You'll have a... Uh, Less issues with weight. So this is just taking off those, some of those outside edges. Yeah. And you can see we're after moving back and forth in the chip, so you can see roughly how far back our teeth go. We've got six molars on each arcade and four arcades in the horse's mouth. And this I like to start without the gag on. 
I can reach a lot of this outside edge and I find that most of them feel slightly less restricted. Yeah. So it's slightly more relaxing. Although some of them don't like me very much regardless. But Is there a lot of horses that don't allow the gag on them, um, and you have to do it like this, or? No, you'd always see. Unfortunately, you can't get do it without a job done with them. Right, because okay. you're never going to be able to get right to the back of their mouth. Yeah. Um. So if that was the case, then you'd be looking at sedating the horses. Right, okay. Um. There's a lot that don't particularly appreciate it. I don't particularly like it. Most of them will put up with it. Yeah. Um. Some are fidgety and others. Some just tell you to go away and know in certain terms. Yeah. And it's not the easiest thing to do. Everything else you can, you know, bribe them with some treats or bung them a hang out or something. Yeah, of course. Obviously, your mouth's the wide one thing open. That we can't do. So I have to rely on just talking to them nicely and hoping that they settle down. I'm trying to make it as nice as possible without traumatising you too much. It sometimes works and sometimes not. And how many times a year do they need it? Like need their teeth checked? It varies a lot horse to horse, but the younger ones as a rule like to see about every six months. Right, okay. Um, because there'll be a lot more changes in sort of, well, from foals. They've got their mouth and their jaw and everything. Their mouth is moving and changing so much, but obviously they're about five years old roughly. Yeah. Um, when their last canine comes through, and they'll start shedding teeth. Their first lot of baby teeth will go at about two and a half. And then some of them will settle down and go, I think they'll slow down and they can comfortably go 12 months. Okay. Some will go nine months, so yeah. Just depends on the horse really. Yeah, six to 12 months as a rule. I had to swap my phone over because it's uh, storage full. So Katie is nicely letting us use her phone. I'll just let start getting some I'll of start again. So she should be absolutely fine to carry on working as per normal. Yeah. If people like to give them the same bit that the teeth are done off. Oh, you not like that brain <laughs> Yeah. And be much more comfortable. Okay. Although her teeth, because they're done regularly, so her teeth just needed a little bit of a tickle around and a tidy up, really. Yeah. And is there a lot of horses that have wolf teeth, or? Quite a lot, yeah. And do, do they affect them at all, or? They can do, yeah. So, as a general rule, if they're going to get wolf teeth, they'll get to them between 6 and 18 months of age. Right, okay. Uh, but they're a bit like wisdom teeth. They're sometimes a bit of a lure unto themselves. So, uh, never say never. Some of them just have one wolf tooth. More common on the upper jaw. Yeah. But I do see some on the lower jaws. Ones on the lower jaw are a real pain in the backside to get out. Right, yeah, nice. Um, and they vary massively in size from... Some of them are so small you can literally pick them out with a fingernail. Right, okay. And they're gone. And some of them take sedation and a bit of persuasion. There's an elevator and a hammer sometimes. Mm, which always looks particularly <laughs> pleasant. And do stallions get them more or? No, not necessarily. Stallions, it's um, in the males, what a lot of people mistake for wolf teeth are their canines. Right, okay. So their canines, right there, like that. And the four teeth can sit in the bar of the mouth. Yeah. And they're predominantly male fighting teeth. Right. And I did spend quite a lot of time a little while ago telling the horse it was a good boy. Just wanted to point out with a mare because it had fought enormous canines. Right. Um, but yeah, they're on male fighting teeth, so they're the ones that they use when you see them messing about and rearing up and trying to bite the back of each other's necks. In the wild, they're the ones that they would use to sink in and do the damage when the stallions right. are fighting over the mare. Yeah. And they're well anchored in as well. So. They're also the ones that they decide to catch on things and snap occasionally. Oh, nice. Always helpful. Yeah. And they're plaque collectors as well. If you're getting anything with a golf ball or plaque on its teeth, it'll be stuck in a canine. Right. But yeah, they tend to be bigger in stallions, more testosterone. Yeah. Um, but you do get males with them. It's not uncommon. 
Everybody loves being told that their mare has got a male tooth. Yeah. So did you say I could ride her tomorrow? She'll yeah, be fine, yeah. Fine. I rode sometimes her this morning. Sometimes they're a little bit cruddy, so they might pull the hay up a little bit. Right, okay. Um, it's not normally where there's too much taken off. I think sometimes they just, when their jaw moves slightly differently, or like us, they come out of the dentist and they think, God, my jaw breaks. Yeah. Bit. When their mouth's been open, because they don't, as you know, open their mouth that wide very often, apart from the occasional yawn. Clips up nicely because I quite like to go home with the same amount of fingers that I came out with. So hopefully, when we're finished, when I was moving her jaw about to start off with, we'll have the same, not the same, we'll have a much nicer sort of range of movement and a nice even grinding noise, which means she can chew her food up well. Over, wouldn't it? If you can't eat, properly, <laughs> would be sort of bigger things like weight loss, um, not chewing their food properly, yeah, pudding, balling up their prey and spitting it out, yeah, sometimes dropping their hard food as well. Be messy eaters, or some of, some of them just are generally messy eaters, um, and ridden. Sort of new evasions, so things like opening their mouth, finding it difficult, or then being reluctant to turn one way or another. Yeah. Right, sort of the way through all various sorts like of Like sudden changes, what yeah. they don't normally do. And you can, things like bucking, they don't normally buck, or yeah. moving, or you know, backing off of the bit. Sometimes they just don't want to put their bridle on, whereas they're normally one that will just put their head down and open their mouth. Yeah. And some of them don't tell you anything, they'll carry on regardless. Really depends on the horse. Some of them you think all their teeth are horrific because they're playing up so much and you get in there and there's next to nothing because they're drama queens or super sensitive probably. Yeah. And then others have the most horrendous teeth you've ever seen and they're probably not Just carrying on with it. Very fine, like they're fine. <laughs> they're well odd. The simple answer is they just don't live as long. Right. But we're also, wild horses aren't having bits in their mouth. They're not being fed all the lovely soft feeds and soft hay that we give them. Yeah. They're on a much more natural, well they are on a natural diet. Yeah. Much tougher forage. So it doesn't quite affect them in the same way, although they do still have lots of dental problems. You know, something with a parrot mouth in the wild, for example, it just really wouldn't live that long. Right. It gets to the point where it couldn't eat. And then just die. And let it die. So we kind of create a lot of problems with our horses when we're riding. Yeah. You know, so these sharp edges that would affect them just from an eating perspective all of a sudden become a much bigger issue because we're putting a bridle on and we're asking them to turn and putting pressure on their mouth. Yeah. You know. And And how do you age a horse through their teeth? <coughs> so ageing, some of them are really easy to age and some of them are almost impossible because they'll give you about five different ages. But you no, start okay. off looking, when they're babies, you would be looking at how many incisors they have. Some are born with incisors, some will come through a, a few days afterwards. So the centrals are coming through at six to eight days, then the medial six to eight weeks and then six to eight months. And then a lot of them are born with their first three premolars. Um, and then they get their first lot of adult molars that they won't, not they're not deciduous, they won't shed them and get adult teeth. And these back three and they come through at one, then two, then three. Right. Which is all well and good if you've got a gag and you can put your hand in, have a look and you can count. If you can't count, when we finish doing this, I will try and show you. You can look for something called the cups on the right. biting surface of their incisors. Well they're called infundibulum but it's much easier to say cups. Right. And they look like little black holes on the biting surface of their teeth. Big go those. And they disappear slowly. Some disappear completely and some horses stay so they just get much much smaller. Yeah. They disappear and the lower centrals at six, 
and their medials at seven, good girl. And then their corners at eight, and then their upper centrals at nine, and their upper medials at ten, and then their upper corners at eleven. And then all the cups are gone by eleven. And then you skip a year and you start looking for something called a dental star, right? Which is a brown line that sits in front of the cup or the incondibulum, and they disappear. Lower centrals 13, medials 14, corners 15. Then you go to the uppers, disappear upper central 16, medial 17, corners 18. Some are easy to see, some aren't. Right. Um, and then after that, it gets a little bit complicated. You can also look for something called the Galvin's Groove, which is not a stain, a lot of people think it is. It's a very subtle groove that runs from their gum line down this, their, uh, they said their central incisor, their corner incisor. And that starts at the very top to appear at 10 years old, works down gradually, halfway gone by, or halfway down by 15, completely top to bottom by 20, and then it disappears from the top. So halfway gone is 25, completely gone is 30. But that relies a lot on uh, nice even wear of the incisors. Right. So some horses' incisors, you know, the saying long in the tooth, that's from the horses as they get older they teeth can go from sort of nice and upright and they just get longer and more angled so you'll look at some old horses and they've got big old teeth because they'll lose their central incisors uppers and lowers at about two and a half years old <coughs> and then the adult tooth will be completely in wear by three so then it's six months in wear so then the next set the medials will go at three and a half in wear by four corners four and a half in wear by five your canines will come through lowers between four, four and a half, uppers between four and a half and five, and that's your last tooth to come through completely. And you'll be losing molars at the same time, so they've got loads going on when they're youngsters. So they lose their first premolar, their number six molar, at two and a half, and the next one at three, and their number eight, which is their third molar back, at three and a half. Right. And they're all in wear six months later. And those back ones that I was waffling on about come in at one in wear by two, come in at two in wear by three, come in at three in wear by four. <laughs> Provided they do it by the book. Yeah. But then you always get the ones that are easier to age. And then the ones that decide to do about four different things all at once and you can't actually tell until you get ages anywhere between seven and twenty-five. Right, okay. And you're never quite sure. Always the ones that the people go, you tell me how old you think they are. Like, Don't know. Right? <laughs> Seven and twenty? Yeah. Some days you think you're bang on and you're like, yeah, it's eight. And they're like, no, it's fifteen. Uh. <laughs> and how long does it take for the other tooth to come through? So when they shed one out? Does it take long for their next one to come through? Normally, when a baby tooth comes off, you can see the adult tooth poking through the gum. Okay, so, um, as you guys can see, I'm sitting here on my sofa. Um, just excuse me, dog. Um, editing, and I realise that most of the end of the video has actually been cut off, unfortunately. I think it was like two or three questions cut off. Don't ask why, technical error throughout the whole bloody video. So I used my um, uh, my phone first of all, and then it said no storage. I then used Katie's phone and it said no storage. So then I had to revert to using the dentist's phone, which is Tanith, um, the lady you've been seeing and watching in the video. I then used her phone. Um, so that's why the camera quality changed throughout the uh, vlog because I just had to use different cameras wherever the camera was coming from I was just using them um, so do apologize for that and another thing I don't know why it um, why the footage was cut short don't ask why technical error so we did cover most of the questions on who people messaged through to me, the ones that I thought of. So most of the common questions that got sent through, I did ask. Um, there was, I can't remember the other two, but I remember one of the questions that was cut off was, how do you look out for like, if there's um, an abscess or anything like um, sinusy 
type of infection and basically what she said was you'll um, find a bad smell in their mouth and like from their nose as well you'll get different types of mucus so you'll get clear mucus yellow and green mucus different colors of mucus will tell you what's actually wrong with them um and i also mentioned that on my last job uh, we had a horse that had two teeth missing so she when you put a bit in she you kept on freaking out so we got her teeth done and her teeth actually um fell out when the dentist or the vet looked at them and another sign that the reason why we had to get the dentist out to that little mare was because she had really bad sinus infection um so that's another sign if your horse has a really snotty nose it might a lot of people think it's like strangled or anything like that straight away um sinus infection is very common as well they um can be related to the teeth or it can be just a chill like a normal cold for a horse so um yeah don't always jump to the worst conclusion guys it can be as just as simple as removing a tooth or anything like that um or even antibiotics will clear it up but like i said the other two questions i can't remember what we were speaking about we we're speaking about a few few questions so like i said i do apologize that the footage got cut short I hope um, most of the questions were answered. If you had any questions that you wanted to be answered, then I hope they were answered by Tanith. If you enjoy videos like this, if you prefer um, these type of videos, so like q and A, I I can do one with the farrier. Um, and when I get the saddler up for Lacey, because she'll be due soon, stuff like that. So if you enjoy the Q&As, please let me know because I can always do that with the other equine professions. So feet, back, whatever. Um I can I'm sure they'll be more than happy to uh answer your guys' questions. So like I normally say, um I did do an outro on the footage that was cut short. So I'm obviously having to redo another outro as I'm editing. So I hope you guys all take care and I'll see you guys on next week's vlog. Not sure what it's going to be about, so make sure you stay tuned, subscribe, like and turn on your post notification. I post every Sunday at 6pm, so to not miss a video, make sure you don't miss a video guys because um, they are getting more interesting as we go on throughout the months. Um, so yes, yeah, so make sure that you tune in and do whatever you can, comment whatever if you want to follow me on instagram and tiktok you don't have to but if you want to i would appreciate it it's um link in the description down below um the other dog's just mooching around now so i'm gonna sign out and finish editing this vlog so i shall see you guys in next week's vlog like i say normally take care and goodbye